Hey everyone, Deku and Ochako finally spill the beans about each other and what really went down with Toga. Only two more chapters are left in the whole MHA manga after this crucial chapter, but there are still tons of unanswered questions. Let's dive into it. The last chapter picked up after the big villain wartime skip, showing us how the Japanese public is reacting. We saw what happened to some key characters, and most of the chapter focused on Deku delivering Shigaraki's last message to Spinner at the hospital. Heroes are working hard to rebuild the country after the destructive war, and the public is mostly shocked and pissed off at the villains. They think Shigaraki was a monster who deserved to die. That's a pretty normal reaction considering all Shigaraki's done, but former League of Villains member Spinner doesn't see it that way. To him, Shigaraki was his first real friend and a hero to outcasts like him. Spinner blames himself for not protecting Shigaraki from All for One's evil plan, and he's furious that the Hero Society will just forget about Shigaraki and the League like they never existed. To keep Shigaraki's memory alive, Spinner decides to write a book about the symbol of fear in the League of Villains. He wants future generations to know about them and their deeds. I'm not sure if Spinner thinks the book will recruit new followers since they don't have a clear ideology. And with Shigaraki gone, they don't have a leader either. I think Spinner just wants to attract true crime fans. People who don't sympathize with the League but are fascinated by crime and the dark side of humanity. So, the book likely won't bring back the League, but it will ensure Shigaraki and the League are remembered. Deku is cool with this, and even suggests making it a comic book to make it more interesting and engaging. Deku also says he'll never forget Shigaraki and the League. The last chapter also showed us Chisaki, Overhaul, crying like a baby in prison, because he let down his mafia surrogate dad. The chapter ended with the new first years arriving at UA and swarming Shoto and Bakugo like crazy fans. Many of these fans are fangirls trying to get their contact info and selfies. Shoto and Bakugo are super confused and try to escape, and Bakugo, unsurprisingly, freaks out and demands all the fangirls be expelled. The new chapter kicks off at UA, where the first year fanboys and fangirls are going on about why they adore Shoto and Bakugo so much. They remember them from the sports festival and the villain war so these guys are like total celebrities. Aizawa steps in between the fangirls, Bakugo and Shoto and he tells them they can't just chase the second years around the school because Bakugo and Shoto are still recovering from their war wounds. The fangirls apologize, and meanwhile, the other class 2A students don't have any fans of their own, so they're just commenting on the Shoto and Bakugo situation. Kaminari is jealous the girls aren't into him, and Mineta probably is too. Deku says Bakugo wasn't really noticed by girls before so he's probably not used to this attention. Shinso is surprised and thinks Bakugo secretly likes it, but Mina says it's not surprising at all. Shinso wasn't in class 1A, so he doesn't know Bakugo well, but everyone else knows how aggressive and standoffish he can be, so he wasn't exactly popular with girls until now. Even though the other students don't have as many fans as Shoto and Bakugo, we see one first-year boy tell Deku he was inspired by his fighting in the war and wants to be like him. Deku is kind of surprised and doesn't know how to respond. It reminds him of his chat with Spinner, who saw Shigaraki as his hero. Deku is thinking about what it means to be a hero, and how to rise to the challenge. While most of the 2A students are excited and full of energy for the new year, Ochako is just sitting there with a neutral expression, lost in thought. She's been like this since she got treated for her injuries at the hospital. The mystery of Ochako's behavior and what it means for her relationship with Deku is actually a big deal, so stay tuned for more on that. The chapter then shifts to Aizawa and present Mike talking about how many reporters want to interview Class 2A because of the war. Aizawa refuses to give any interviews because he just wants his students to be normal high school kids again and not worry about being celebrities. We then see the massive reconstruction efforts in Japan, with students actively helping out. Deku is back in his hero costume, joining the rest of Class 2A and some pro heroes like Best Genist, Fat Gum, and Ed Shot at a work site. Edshot is still that stringy thing he was at the end of the war arc, but he's getting bigger and has arms now, so he's not just like a snake. Bakugo asks if he'll stay like this forever, and Edshot says he's going to be better than ever. It looks like he'll slowly grow back to his human size and regrow all his limbs. I have no idea how this works. His quirk seems pretty overpowered compared to the average quirk user, but it is what it is. We then see local civilians helping clear rubble and rebuild their homes with the heroes. The civilians appreciate all the help from the heroes and bring them some delicious food. One civilian says his farm was destroyed in the war, and when Deku says sorry, the man replies that he doesn't blame Deku or the heroes. In fact, seeing how bravely the heroes fought has motivated the civilians to work hard to rebuild. They want to be active in the rebuilding effort and not just rely on the heroes. 
This is a big deal, because the old hero society had everyone relying on heroes for everything, and when there were no heroes around, people like Tenko Shimura fell through the cracks. So the fact that civilians are stepping up to make society better is a big deal. If this attitude spreads, the new hero society will be more successful, and fewer people will fall through the cracks. After that, another bus full of students shows up. Cementos is the teacher in charge of the first years, and they're here to apologize for the ruckus they caused when they first arrived at UA. They're also here to help with the cleanup and rebuilding. We see that kid who's a huge Deku fan proudly saying that even though they're newbies and don't have their provisional licenses yet, they still want to help. There's a lot of excitement and good vibes among the civilians, the hero students, and of course the heroes themselves. The heroes and hero students fought so hard and bravely, and since the whole world watched them in real time as they fought and sacrificed for the greater good, everyone was inspired and motivated to follow in their footsteps. Then we see Ochako again, and she looks pretty emotionless, but there's a faint smile on her face. She says she's relieved to see everyone more optimistic after the war, and then she says she's going off on her own to get some food. But Deku and Suyu sense something's off with Ochako. She's not doing anything obviously weird, but she doesn't seem like herself, and even the smile she gave her friends seems kind of fake. Now that the war's over, UA students aren't stuck in their dorms at night. That night, Deku realizes Ochako isn't there. According to Tsuyu, Ochako said she was going home for a while, but she's not answering her messages, which is weird for someone as friendly as her. We learned that during Toga's fight with All Might, the reporter's camera battery ran out. So something got missed. I think what the cameras missed is Toga sacrificing her life to save Ochako by transferring her blood to Ochako. So to the public, Toga's still seen as just a villain who died, but in reality, she died saving Ochako. No wonder Ochako feels weird and conflicted about this. We see Ochako standing alone on a hilltop overlooking the city. She's glad things are getting back to normal. The city looks normal again after the awful war, and that's good. She loves seeing everyone smiling and optimistic again, but she can't be that optimistic herself. She doesn't want to talk about it because she doesn't want to bring everyone down, but she's deeply troubled by what happened to Toga. She remembers Toga's final moments, crying and smiling at the same time, and reveals she's been hiding the pain from her wound, referring to the wound on her stomach from the battle. She starts crying. I don't think she means physical pain since she was discharged from the hospital. I think she means emotional pain from Toga dying to save her, and no one even knows. Everyone thinks Toga was an evil villain who deserved to die. The chapter ends with Deku climbing the hilltop, seeing Ochako, and calling out her name. Deku has gone out of his way to find Ochako. They're alone now, so it's finally time to talk about their feelings and Toga's fate. As far as we know, Toga died in the end. I always hesitate to say someone's actually dead in a shonen series without a conclusive statement or funeral, but it really seems like Toga died, and Ochako feels terrible about it. Like Deku, Ochako can't just move on and be optimistic knowing people actually died during the war. Even if they were villains, Shigaraki and Toga were still people, and they died during their battles with Deku and Ochako, even though they didn't directly kill them. Deku and Ochako feel partly responsible for their deaths, and that's tough to deal with mentally. Remember, they're teenage high school students, not battle-hardened war vets. Anyway, Deku and Ochako are finally alone, and it looks like they'll talk about what happened and their feelings for each other. Drop a comment with your bets. Are they going to confess, stay friends, or keep acting awkward around each other forever? One thing I'm really curious about, Toga always wanted to be close to other people, even saying she wanted to consume them to become one with them. When she took someone's blood, she could transform into them and take on their characteristics. So, I wonder if when Toga gave Ochako her blood, a part of Toga got transferred into Ochako. Could a part of Toga still be in there, allowing her to symbolically stay with Ochako and Deku forever, especially if Deku and Ochako become a couple? Assuming Toga is really dead, this would be a poetic end for her. She loses her life but lives on inside Ochako, who then ends up with Deku, the boy Toga also loved. I'm excited to see what this conversation between Deku and Ochako brings. I'm also hoping we get answers to the unsolved mysteries, like Deku's father and that unknown villain introduced a few chapters ago. We've only got two chapters left, so we're running out of time. Like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.